Hey there, friends. I wanted to do a little video about how to make those NES sounds. And you can use pretty much any program you want, because uh, NES sounds aren't that difficult, uh, to be honest with you. But let's see what, what the deal is all about. So first off, let's go here and create a new track. I'm gonna route this to take all MIDI input. I'm gonna turn the monitoring on. I'm gonna turn the um, arm the track for recording. And then I'm gonna open up a virtual MIDI keyboard by pressing Alt and B on the keyboard. And here we can play notes and we actually get output, if, if you can see there. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up a new effect for this track. It's gonna be on the Kogos folder. And uh, it's the VSTi Aria Synth. Now this one, this is an interesting one, because it allows you to do basic synthesis with just a few dials. And if you play this, I'm gonna turn the volume down a little bit because this is typically a pretty loud one. So we get a basic sine wave sound. But I don't really want a sine wave. Sine wave wasn't really a thing on uh, NES. So what I wanna do is focus more on the square uh, thing here. So I'm gonna turn the pulse width down all the way and I'm gonna turn the square mix up all the way. So now we get a more of a NES type of sound. And I can play this on my computer keyboard. Now, there's a little bit of a latency, so I'm sorry if, if the playing is awful. That's the that's the only reason. But yeah, this is just how you make This is how you can play those NES sounds. A very basic, <laughs> very basic idea behind this. Uh, there's not much of control behind this. If you, the NES had uh, like two channels. Well, the uh, American or uh, European NES had two channels with square, square mix, and uh, one channel with triangle. So we can also turn the triangle up, and then we can play like bass note. Or oh, this more of a rounded type of note. And it would typically used as bass notes on NES, NES tracks. I think the Japanese version of the Famicom had more channels, so they probably had actually like six channels. So a lot of Japanese games like Final Fantasy and, and a, lot, a lot of others, they had more channels, so they had more complex songs. But the European and the uh, American versions of the NES had just like four channels, and I think there was one channel that could do samples, but there were two square channels, one uh, triangle channel, and one uh, noise channel. So we can also do noise, but this is a little bit trickier. I it's just, uh, let's go here. I'm gonna turn this down a little bit because this is gonna be loud. And we can add an instrument here or um, a plugin here. If you go to the JS uh, folder, we can find a noise plugin. And there are quite a few of these, so if you don't feel like browsing it through and trying to find the right plugin, you can just go to the filter here and type noise down here. So now you get a uh, loser white noise. We also have a pink noise generator here. But let's just pick the white noise. And we're immediately gonna get a lot of, a lot of noise here. What we wanna do with this one is, uh, I'm just gonna insert a, a new empty item here. And then I'm gonna Click it with my uh, right mouse button, and I'm gonna uh, select Apply Track Effects to Items as New Take. So it is gonna it's gonna apply a bunch of noise to this empty item, just the way we want it. So now we can go ahead and delete this one. So we remove that, and if you play the track, we we notice that we have the white noise playing on this. On this very track here. Now what we can do is, I'm just gonna go to the first track again. I'm gonna remove the synthesizer. I'm gonna add something else here, and we're gonna add a sampler, Rio Samplematic 5000. From here, we can add a sample for for this track. And if we just click Import Item from Arrange, it's gonna import the noise track here, <laughs> and we can we can just simply turn down the release and. It's it's a uh, it's a pretty long one this, so we don't want it to be too long. So this is about a second. You can see the length here about a second long, and I don't want to touch the release really, but 
Oh, we can just drag from here. Okay. So let's make it like half a second. And now if we press the black square, we can we can hear the noise playing. Which is excellent. This is just just what we wanted. And now if we turn the if we arm the track for recording, we can play the sample. But we get we don't really get anything except the same. So here what we're gonna do is click the mode and set this to to note. And now we can play this. We get different notes. The problem is typically these noise things were used as uh, as like drums on NES. So if you have different drums, they're typically different lengths of noise. So the hi-hat would be like a very high note and so forth. So I'm just gonna copy this track and make another one. And for this one, I'm gonna make this really short and I'm gonna make it really high. And we can just ignore, just, just ignore the MIDI note and just make this pretty high, like let's say there. So there you go, that's, that's like pretty much a hi-hat sound for us. So what you could do is just record a sample of this and have that act as your hi hat, and then you could just use some sort of sampler. Have this play as your as your as your hi hat. Well, what 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 about the other sounds? So, so here we have the noise still playing. I'm gonna add another plugin for this one, and this is gonna be uh, the pitch, real pitch. Uh, what we can do here is I'm gonna click the trim button, and I'm going to uh, add an envelope for uh, shift semitones. And now we can add points to the envelope here. So we can do something like this. Right. And I'm gonna turn the octaves down one. <laughs> this is sounding pretty awful. But uh, let's trim this down a little bit. Something like this. Can you hear that? So that could be our snare drum. So we have uh, the pitch lowered for the noise a little bit, and then we have uh, the pitch going from minus 18 semitones to plus 18 semitones in about, how long is that? Uh, it's about a quarter of a second. So that's like a snare sound. So you could also just take that and uh, render that as one of your samples. Okay, let's get rid of these now. The problem with uh, just using this synthesizer is that uh, you can't really you can't really shape the square wave in any any way. So you have the basic square wave, and it just sounds like that you know, at all times. But let's let's do something with a little bit more versatile synthesizer. Let's see here. Let's just use Spire because I happen to have Spire here and we get a nice visual here. So I'm just going to concentrate on this section of the plugin. Well, most of the time at least. I'm going to initialize this to, to turn everything off. And what we get here is a nice triangle wave. And what we can do with this is if I turn the control A all the way up, you can see it's turning into a Yes, square wave. And now with square wave, here we can actually control the width of the square wave. So if we turn this all the way up here, we get something like this. If we turn this to the middle, we get like this. And if we turn this here, we get something even more different. So you can do different type of effects. And this was, I think, very normal for the NES, that you could have different types of, or different length for the square waves that you were using. Another problem is, of course, that you don't typically have just your normal square wave. So let's insert a MIDI item here. And what I meant to say is that you don't often play just, like, straight-up note. You can have all sorts of weird effects. Mm. Let's do something like this and turn the rate for this up a little bit. So you start to get a kind of awful, <laughs> well, depends on who you are. 
But let's say let's say you like this. So this is a very typical like NES type of sound to me at least. So you get all sorts of these weird flutters and phasing. If you want to do some sort of effect, let's just do a basic. Uh, let's just do a basic arpeggio here, and we can even make it uh, a little bit more long. And if you turn the speed up. We get like a weird, <laughs> weird NES uh, effect. And naturally inspire. It's it's easier to make noise because you have a noise oscillator here, <laughs> so you can do stuff like that. But that's not very NES, I don't think. I don't remember hearing too many too many uh, effects like that. And I don't know what kind of noise this. This doesn't really sound like a basic uh, white noise. So there's that's one possibility. You can do a weird little drum sounds, even the noise in in this one. And I don't think too many people would notice. But if you want to stay true to the NES sound, you just use the white noise and try to modulate that in weird ways. Another thing we could do is we got this weird little shaper here. So we turn the uh, wetness up a little bit. So we could turn the drive up and get a little bit more of a fuller sound. We could turn the bit rate down. We could tr turn the sample rate down, which actually should affect this a little bit more. <laughs> yeah, you can get like really weird, weird sounds with that. So if you want to do this with some like free synthesizer, you just add a bit crusher at the end of the chain and that does it for you. And I'm sure there are free synthesizers that allow you to control the width or length or whatever you call that. So this is just just this is one. The one that comes with Reaper, I don't think there's a control for that. But uh, there are so many just VST synthesizers on the internet. Just Google them and find one that suits you. Alright, that's everything.